Okay, well, as you can see, I've got a platform for what is going to be my tool shed. But if you're going to build, say, uh, a small art studio or a tiny house, the same building principles apply. So uh, when I built the platform and the foundation, I really didn't do the best job of taking video. So what I'm going to do is build a model uh, with some 2x4s that I have around and then slice in some of the footage that I took while I was building the foundation. So uh, we're going to cover how to level the platform, uh, how to hang joists by yourself, there's a nice little trick to that, and uh, how to lay out for your floor joists. So let's get started. The very first step is to make a square in the exact dimensions of your building. So in my case, I'm building a building that's 16 by 10 feet, so I need two 2 by 6s cut to exactly 16 feet long, and for the sides, I need two 2 by 6s cut to exactly 9 feet 9 inches long. I'm using 2 by 4s here for the model, but on the actual shed, I used treated 2 by 6s And to attach the front to the sides to make the square, I used a 4 inch long deck screw with a washer. Once you have the pieces attached, you need to make sure the foundation is square. And you do that by measuring corner to corner, and you adjust the square until you have the same measurement. Now I've adjusted my frame until the measurements are the same, corner to corner, and the frame is square. And to keep it square while I'm working on it, I'm going to attach a piece of half inch plywood to each corner. And I've cut a hole because this is where the post is going to come through. So let's attach the plywood and I'll show you the next step. Well, I looked at the video and I thought that this part might be a little confusing. So to help clear it up, um, I just want to explain it a little bit more. So once the frame was square and we attached the plywood to keep the frame square, we then hammered a spike in each corner, the spike representing the center of the post. Once we had a spike in each corner, my son and I physically lifted the entire frame up and moved it off of the building site. Once that was done, we dug holes for our concrete footings, poured the footings, let the footings dry, and then we moved the frame back and that's when we started to build again. And now we are going to level the frame. What you'll need is four clamps and your four posts. The first step is to clamp one of your posts into position with the clamp. And I like to set the first post that is lowest to the ground and then work my way around the frame. So I've got my first post set and now I'm going to level my second I level the frame by setting my second post. And you can do this by yourself. It's obviously a little bit easier if you have some help. So now I'll put this into position with the clamp and then go to the next corner. Okay, so I'm setting my third post. And you can see that I'm just using a 2x4 here, but on the actual shed, I used a treated 4x4. Okay, then I'll go to my fourth post, and I'm just getting it close. I'll fine-tune it after I get them all just within the range. Okay, so we have the frame off the ground, and it's pretty level. Let's come closer and take a look at the level and do some fine adjustments. Well, when we come closer to the level, we can see that we're just a little bit off. And if I raise the left side of the level up a little bit, I know that I have to go up on the left side of my building probably about an inch so I'll go down to the end loosen the clamp up raise up my 2x4 and reclamp it and then take another look at the bubble before I loosen the clamp I'm gonna put a pencil mark where the frame is and that's just a reference point because once I loosen this clamp if I don't have that line there I don't know where the frame was and that looks like it's about an inch so let's go back and check the level okay so that's right on now we're going to work on the other post and work our way all the way around the frame okay well I've worked my way around the frame 
making sure that the outside frame was level from each post, going from post to post and checking my level. And now that I know that they are all level, I like to double check it by going from one side of the frame to the other side on a diagonal and also checking that for level. And this is nice and level, so we're going to attach the frame to the posts. To set the frame to the post, I'm using four four inch long deck screws. I'm going through the front of the frame and the side of the frame into the post. Then I'll remove the clamp and use a four and a half inch long lag bolt and bolt the frame to the post with the lag bolt also. Now once that's done, I build up this post because that's really what's going to be the strength of it. These four pins of screws aren't going to hold all that weight, but if I have a, a two by six on the front, and I don't have a two by six, so you'll have to imagine it, and a two by four on the side, I then get a nice solid post. Now, when I cut these two by, the two by six and the two by four to create this post that goes to the ground, I want that to be a tight fit to the concrete. So I, um, it's one of those cuts where you sort of knock it into place with your hammer. So it's just a nice tight fit. Well, I just wanted to take a minute and look at this corner a little closer uh, because it's really an important part of the structure. Now, before I set the posts, I painted the end grain and about six or eight inches up the post with this all weather roof cement. And I did that just to give me a little bit more insurance on prolonging the life of the structure, uh, even though this is a treated four by four. Now, when I built the corner with the two by six and the, and the two by four, I also painted the end grain and the back side where it came in contact with the four by four. And then eventually you can see that I painted the entire corner with the roofing cement. So anyway, just something to think about. Now that my frame is square and level, I'm ready to lay out for my floor joists. I'm going to set the floor joist 16 on center. And that's done because a standard piece of plywood is four by eight feet. And if you set 16 on center at four feet, you'll split a floor joist, giving you something to nail your plywood decking to. And at eight feet, you'll split the floor joist. So it's just a standard building procedure. It's pretty easily done. So let me show you how you do it. To lay out for my floor joist, you pull your tape measure and every 16 inches, there is usually a little red mark with the word stud above it. And that's your center mark for your stud, or in this case, my floor joist. And so what you want to do is measure three quarters of an inch back. So I would measure 15 and a quarter. And so every 16 inches, you're going to have that red mark. And so it's 16, 32, 48, and so on. So you want to just make sure that you measure three quarters of an inch back put an X where you want the center of the stud to go, and that's how you lay out for uh, a floor joist, putting your floor in, or laying out for uh, building a wall. After I've marked where my floor joists are going to go, I come back with my speed square and extend the line across the face of the frame and down and put an X where my joist will go. That way when I go to attach the joist to the frame, I know to keep the outside of the joist along this line here and to cover the X with the floor joist. Now it's really important that when you're marking out where your floor joists are going to go, that you pull from the same side of the building. So if I'm pulling from the left side of the building in the front of the building, I'd want to go to the back of the building and also pull from the left side to mark out where my floor joists are going to go. Now when it comes time to set the floor joists, that can be difficult if you're working by yourself and that's what I was doing. And so what I found helpful is to clamp a 2x4 to the bottom of the frame and that creates an edge that the joist can rest on while, while you attach it through the frame with a few screws. Well now we're going to switch over to some of the footage that I shot while I was building the foundation. I'm going to show you how I set one of the floor joists using the 2x4 as a shelf to hold it and support it. And then we're going to focus on this black painted area 
which I refer to as an apron. And there's a specific reason for it. To help me set my floor joist, I've temporarily clamped a 2x4 to the bottom of my frame. That creates a ledge for the 2x6 floor joist to rest on while I position it into place with my hammer. Once I have the 2x6 in the right position, I permanently attach it with a 4 inch long deck screw and a washer. If I didn't use the washer, the screw would sit too far into the outside frame. Well, I'm sure you've noticed all the scraps of concrete and brick in between the cells of the 2x6s, and that's there for a reason. I'm going to fill this space with any kind of uh, masonry material I can find. I'm even going to throw uh, bottles, and old beer bottles and wine bottles and things like that in this space because I don't want this space under my shed to become a home for animals. So right now I'm going to show you how I attach uh, what I'm calling an apron to help hold all of that material inside underneath the shed. To hold the apron I've attached a few 2x4s on the inside of my frame. Now the 2x4s are pressure treated. Now I'm going to take a piece of pressure treated plywood, half inch plywood, and attach it to those 2x4s. Well that's all for now and it's starting to rain here so I'm going to wrap it up. I hope you found the video useful and uh, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.